AKA Best Bail Bonds Big Game Coverage, live from Miami. It is the Blitz here on 1250 ESPN San Antonio, 94.5 FM, sitting at home. Well, suckers, because we're live on Radio Row out here in Miami. Be on ESPNSA.com and go to Facebook. we got all the stuff going on right now. And if you're on there right now, you're looking at the beautiful mug of Lofa Tutupu sitting in with us. Is that you? Huh? Is that you, you? You're not going to say anything? It gives you a... Well, we're live. So oh, I oh, know you're just playing to, to the camera at this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, here, you, you know, what do you do but, with uh, your hands and all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> going to go Ricky Bobby on us? I know, right? Well, thank you for having me, fellas. <laughs> we're glad to have you aboard on an early Monday morning as the car wash is beginning. You know, Super Bowl always has connotations for so many other folks. For you, when you went through all of this, when did it hit you that uh, I'm in the Super Bowl? Uh, you know, well... A blessed to have been on some great teams, but so not I was, there. But I when was, does it when does it hit the guys? That I, I think not. It didn't hit me until I went out to warm up. Warm you up, know? and there's way more people on the field than normal. You know, it's it's not a normal experience, and um, you know, and, and Holmgren, you know, he he prepared us for that. He's like, hey, get out there and you know, get your bearings and everything. And uh, but it doesn't hit you until you get on that field. Now I played back-to-back national titles before I went to that game, so I was somewhat prepared for that moment. But, uh, what about yeah. the week before? I mean, how do you handle oh, yourself on a Monday before the Saturday or Sunday Super Bowl? I mean, you know, you, you hope that your your family takes care of you and leaves you alone, <laughs> which mine <laughs> did. I mean, they, uh, my dad hadn't been through it, you mm-hmm. know. He, he knew all about it. So uh, it's just – and then handling the media and, you know, not saying the wrong thing right. to, you know, anger the other team. There's no, you know, you don't want to give them anything that, you know, to feed off of. But uh, just, you know, embrace the moment. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a special, you know, the combination of – special journey which that season was for both these teams you know right. hats off to them you know phenomenal job you think about the experiences at usc and, and playing in some of those games the greatest college game ever you know as, as longhorn fan uh you know see seeing yeah. that right um Wait, so, yeah yeah, yeah. You, according yeah, to you it, that was the greatest well, although as far honestly, as excitement level, let's I, I just mean, put it there yeah it's it's been the title game's been pleasing lately though so, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. But, but but do you look back and go yeah i, I mean that was still the greatest college game ever, wasn't it? Uh, if you're a Longhorn fan, I would say yes. That's the. Great- <laughs> it was very entertaining. Uh, Vince Young's knee was down on that lateral. Uh, I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. <laughs> so, if you'd have won, would it have been the greatest college game ever? Well, I was already in the NFL. Uh, but I mean, but if, if SC- you USC, uh, I mean, if, if you'd have won, well, yeah, then. it's tough though. You look back, look, think about you know. Ohio State, when they dethroned the national, you know, the, the Miami Hurricanes, and everybody's like, oh, they don't even stand a chance in this game. No, or he's Claret. <laughs> then you think about Tua, Tagovailoa, coming in in the second half, taking them all the way. We've been very, yeah. you know, lucky with the last few uh, national championships. All right, so one last question. Would it be the best college championship game with a Texas school involved? Yeah. All right. All right. I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> you know, you got me there far enough. Yeah, 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 you, yeah, you had to. Yeah, yeah, yeah you had to. Because I wasn't I mean, willing to concede right when there. When you look at, though, like with, with Kansas City, they haven't been in this game in 50 years. There are people alive that are longtime Chiefs fans that have never seen this before. Most of the people that w- within this or- Niners organization, they haven't come this close um, uh, in, in a number of years. What's it like, you know, Super Bowl week when you have – Two inexperienced teams trying to predict what's going to happen, knowing what you just explained, what it was like Super Bowl week and just walking out on the field on game day. Well, you know, just, you know, take it in and, you know, embrace the moment and just, you know, play your game. And I can promise you there's one guy with experience uh, that has a ring that I know of, Richard Sherman, you know, Uh, former, you know, Seahawk great. And, um, you know, I'm sure he's telling them, you know, just – that you know nothing changes and that's largely you know in Pete Carroll and the Seahawk philosophy is every every matchup is a championship matchup so that when you get to that championship game the actual one that decides who goes home the winner it's just business as usual and I think that's the you know the strongest you know sentiment you can you know relate to to your teammates and you know in this week and in this in this matchup you know you came from a lineage you won all the time you know you moved up you you were consistently in championships and when you I know a lot of guys that have made it through and never won anything what's the biggest lesson to learn from being a great player but being a player on a great team that wins a title knowing your role 
in you know whether it's a leadership role whether it's one you know when I was a rookie um, was blessed to to be voted captain at the end of the season for the playoff run and uh, you know largely for the first few weeks and you know or months of the season I didn't do I didn't have an active you know voice in other than calling the play and I remember Grant Westrom you know he's like all right now get out of here like, <laughs> <laughs> and in some other choice words in there because yeah, I was trying to give the team a little pep talk I was like all right we could do this he's like just give me the play yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes, sir. Uh, but so, yeah, just uh, blessed to when you, when you win one, it, it is incredibly captivating in terms of, okay, you know how what it takes, you know, you know how to do it, and, and just making sure you thrive in your role and whatever it means for that team. Um, that that's the biggest part of it. He is Loaf of the Tupu sitting with us here on the Blitz live from Radio Row. We'll be here all week long as we talk football with the very best. Now let's get the nuts and bolts. Let's look at the game. A defensive guy, you got to probably be leaving on leaning on one side of the ball, right? Absolutely. <laughs> but given a quarterback like that. Even though, you know, we've seen what the Niners have been able to do in the last month and how strong they've been, you just feel like, what are you going to do? What's that last thing you got to do to stop Mahomes? It's, don't give him the ball. Uh, you know, if, if they could just uh, same thing they did to Aaron Rodgers last week, you know, limit his touches. Uh, I thought it was incredible by Shanahan. We, was at one point they reeled off what 15 straight runs it was. Um, that's got to be a record for, for, you know, a guy that loves to get after the passing game and have that open it up for him to just know, okay, you know what? We're only going to throw the ball eight, ga- eight times. Like if you told the quarterback going into that, they'd be like, <laughs> Well, why don't you just run Wildcat? Yeah, right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, a quarterback you're giving a hundred million dollars to, <laughs> right? And so, uh, you know, it's it's incredible, you know, just to have that, you know, stay in that presence of mind that hey, this is how we win this week, and you know, you, you never know. I want to flip it to the other side. You're a defense, and you know they're only going to throw the ball eight times. Oh, I love it. Okay, me as a, as a linebacker, if you're yeah. not a, if you're a linebacker and you don't love hearing that, then you you know you're not you're not where you're supposed to be. Now, uh, who are you taking in the game? I got the Niners. You're a California guy. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, but I'm a Seahawk. <laughs> yeah, you but know. still, you're a so Cali it's, guy. It's not easy for me to say. I'm just going with the defense. When you look at uh, linebackers th- throughout the league right now, um, and then, you know, we're in Cowboy country. We carry the, the Cowboys, do a lot with the Cowboys. And last year, we thought Jalen Smith and Leighton Van Der Esch were going to be the best young uh, linebacking uh, tandem coming up. And this past year, it wasn't quite what we thought we were going to see. And, of course, Leighton got hurt. But when you look around it, who who does have the best linebackers, in your in your opinion? I mean, you don't have to go off outside of Seattle, you know, with <laughs> my, my guys Bobby and KJ. But, um, you know, the, the guys that I've respected over the years, and, of course, he just retired, uh, you know, Hall of Fame career, Luke mm-hmm. Keekley, uh, him, Thomas Davis, they were wreaking havoc. You know, me and Thomas were the same draft class. It's incredible that he was able to do it for this long. Still doing it in uh, L.A., I believe. And uh, so those are some of the guys that I – you know, it's must-see TV as a fan of football, big hits, interceptions, and big plays. You know, you brought up Keekley and the, the retirement and hearing him speak on why he's leaving and the, and the toll that was paid on him. Certainly, uh, you understand that as a former player and, and gotten involved with a situation that will allow, or at least to work with players to deal with some of the things that are going to be, that are headed their direction post-playing days. Now, Luke had some issues that we were surprised to see him go early, but he's not dealing with anything more different than you are, I'm sure, to this day. Yeah, and um, so mentally, physically, emotionally, the, the game takes a toll on you. And, you know, and we saw it, and I'm I'm proud of Luke, you know, the phenomenal career, but I'm proud of him recognizing that and making the decision rather than the decision being made for him. And, um, you know, there is some real healing that needs to take place. And, you know, um, you know I believe that can be repaired. I fully because I've done it myself mm-hmm. and which is why I created Zone and CBD and why I'm here today talking to you guys outside of talking about just football. I feel like I could play again. And you got to understand I didn't feel like I could play when right. I was when I was playing some of those years. And uh, so uh, it's incredible, uh, my journey uh, of health and wellness with this. And, um, you know, the stories I'm hearing every day about how it's changing lives, I could not be more grateful to, to be doing this. As we have seen – incremental changes with the NFL and we're starting to hear some discussion about it at the very minimum CBD and maybe the next step beyond that but CBD is certainly becoming part of the conversation what is left to be done to get this more of as a regular thing in the NFL uh just you know it's 
erasing that stigma about what it is and what it isn't. And, you know, so you say hemp and they're like, oh, weed. Like, yeah. No. Right. And if you do want to refer to it, refer to it as cannabis because it's of that, the, you know, the cannabis genus of the plant. But largely educating people uh, about what it is and what it isn't and what, you know, that stigma we fight, which is even why we named it Zone In, you know, being it's a play off of the zone, mm-hmm. positive psychology, flow state, just, you know, totally immersed in the moment. And, you know, just being your best self. And that's, you know, who doesn't want it? Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want to perform at a higher level? So uh, t- tell us how it affected you. So and when did you get on it and how did you I, get to where you are now? I, I've had 10 surgeries, 15 concussions. That's largely why I only played six years, mm-hmm. uh, five years and five games, because one of those years was on IR. And I limped away from the game and, you know, searching for answers. Like, yeah, is this how I got to go through life the rest of my life? You know, because my dad, my dad went through it and, mm-hmm. you know, and as best he could until he passed away. Uh, it's coming up on 10 years. But so, um, you know, just you know, I took all those supplements, um, you know, uh, vitamin C, vitamin D, fish oils, uh, glucosamine chondroitin. I took all of them. You know, I was like, oh, I heard it's supposed to be great for the mind and body. Still felt horrible. And, you know, sorry to any supplement company out there. I'm just saying <laughs> yeah. that when I started this, uh, my daily regimen, I heard about it and heard about it. And people were just, all these amazing stories were coming. And I was like, yeah, why not? I'm going to give it a try. And uh, especially with such little THC in it, mm-hmm. there is no head high. It is just total focus and crushing what's in front of you and there's no more peaks and valleys in terms of mood it's just smooth sailing road and uh, i you know i love it tried it about three years ago it's been three years now that i've been taking it like three years ago i was 280 pounds uh, not going to the gym uh, <laughs> you, a, you are too <laughs> look at you uh, yeah all right, all right yeah. you look at look look like you can <laughs> yeah. still play i i'm telling you i didn't look like this you know back in the day I, you know and it, it's uh it's became like a heightened awareness in terms of a mind body connection uh because that's ultimately we have a system in our bodies called the ecs in which cbd directly you know interacts with that and all the other beneficial compounds of the plant when you think about how you feel today um if this were available to you while you were still playing, and you know where I'm going with this, when will the NFL and the NFLPA get on the same page and make this available to current players? I thought you were going Hall of Fame, but you know we totally different pages. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. No, ab- absolutely. You you should be in the uh, 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 San Diego well, Hall of Fame, right? I'll take it. Yeah, there uh, you go. All right. No, but uh, so to get to the point, they they, they said. That, <laughs> I'm sorry. They're going to have a conversation. And even just having the conversation means they're open-minded to it. Jerry Jones came out and said, we have to take a closer look at this. Um, he's a very powerful, you know, guy in the NFL. And so for him to say that, you know, I hope it holds weight and just, you know, they, they make that decision. You know, um, they're going to talk NFL and NFL PA are sitting down to discuss it as a pain, man- pain management tool. That would be incredible. Um, we're going to see careers longer. You know, we're going to see healthier players, and uh, it's, it's going to be incredible, uh, not just, you know, for those guys, but you're going to put a better product on the field. Guys aren't going to limp into Sunday. They're going to run into Sunday. And, and that's say, what is so important that people forget, hey, it improves the product. Yeah. Right? I mean, and then and then you're going to see them doing even better and more stuff in their community. Uh, it's – it's I – I can't wait for it to happen. I'm excited about it. Zone in. How do people find your product? Zone in CBD. Z O N E I N C B D dot com is our website. Um, we're available in some states, seven, eight states right now, um, and we just landed a big deal with Bartels up in Washington. It's the 67 uh, Bartel Drugs, 67 uh, uh, stores statewide. So, uh, but largely online, and we're coming out with a new product uh, in three weeks: a, a muscle rub, a topical. So I'm gonna have to get you guys some. A topical, per- certainly. Yeah. So, so ZoneIn.com. How are they? ZoneInCBD.com. ZoneInCBD.com. That's where you get it online. That's Lofa right there. You checking him out right there? That used yeah. to be 290. Yeah, no, right? I, got, I got a 51. Jersey in my closet. It was my wife's, but yeah. Oh, that's the Seattle connection. Yeah, right? exactly. Oh, awesome. Hey, brother, thank you so much for hanging with thank us. Thank you for Appreciate having me. Appreciate you, man. Right on, man. We'll be right back. You're on the Blitz, 1250 ESPN San Antonio, 94.5 FM, and on the go at ESPNSA.com.